Let's turn in our Bibles tonight to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Turn me down in the house just a tad, please, sir. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you again for the power of your word. We rest upon your word tonight, and we receive strength, we receive health, and most of all, we receive peace tonight. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Anybody planning on enjoying the 4th of July and the rest of this week? Amen. How many of you planning on getting some rest this week? Hallelujah. You know, one of the attributes of the anointing that we've already learned is that when Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, He said, I will give you what? Rest. Then He said something. He said, Take my yoke upon you, for it is easy and my burden is is light. So this is what I want to do tonight. I want to destroy the yoke of the enemy and replace that yoke with God's yoke. And God's yoke will always bring you rest. So tonight we are going to learn once and for all how to defeat stress and put it under our feet. Amen. Have you ever felt like that picture at times in life? concerning your family members, concerning uh, your children, concerning your finances. Anybody ever felt that way with their boss? Praise God. The demands in life constantly try to bring stress. And after the message that Miss Paula Brain brought to us, on Sunday night, I was so blessed by one of the things that she said that brought that cancer was stress. I began to pray about it, and what the Lord showed me is that a lot of people are actually burdened by stress, but are so used to it that it's become common to them, and they don't even realize that they're stressed out all the time. Let's just be real tonight. Most of us have an overworked mentality because that's what we're trained to do. So we know that we get a certain amount of sleep, we have a routine, we go to work. And most people in the United States of America, as great as this nation is, and thank God for our independence, thank God for our freedom, thank God, thank God, thank God for what He's done in this great country. Amen. Would anybody like to praise Him for a moment for our freedom to worship and for this great country? Hallelujah. But we've seen a pattern over the last 70 years or so that we're getting into this place that's actually taking us back to a place of dominion and authority like it was in Egypt. And that brings people into bondage. We have houses that are too big, that's got a big mortgage on it. We've got these cars, and on top of those cars, we have an extra car that we probably don't need. And then we go buy all of these things that we think that we've got to have, and there's all of this stress involved just to pay for the things that we have. The word careful in the Bible means this, anxious to take care or to take thought. So when he says, be careful for nothing, a literal translation is to be stressful about nothing in this life. Don't be anxious. Don't even take thought about what's happening. Here is the truth about stress. Here is the world's definition. It is your body's reaction to the demands of this world. 
And here is God's definition. It is an unwelcome burden that comes to steal the joy of your living. You received a word from the Lord when you came into this house tonight. If you saw Miss Pat, you certainly received a word from God when you came into this house tonight. Does anybody remember what that word was from the Lord? You are too blessed to be stressed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Well, let's say it together like this. Say, I am too blessed to be stressed. Now, how many of you know the anointing breaks the yoke of the enemy? Amen. We are a blessed people, and there's no reason that God's people should ever have stress in their lives. Stress comes to rob your peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding that keeps your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. It comes to steal your joy. And if you didn't already know this, stress has already been identified by the medical community as a killer. Yes, we already learned that stress can be a factor that would allow the enemy to bring unwanted diseases like cancer. So how many of you realize the importance of maintaining God's rest in your life? Amen? The influences of stress are widespread. These are just some of the things that we've learned and that I did some study on concerning this. Number one, which I mentioned, it depletes the immune system. Your immune system was designed by God so that it can protect you and to ward off any unwanted sicknesses or ailments in your body. And, and very much like what we you know, talk about spiritually, you have to physically take care of your body as well. Amen. How many of you know as hot as it's been that you have to drink plenty of fluids, plenty of waters, plenty of water to take care of yourself? And that's one of the things that Miss Paula talked about. The number one thing that she did to start healing her body was to fill herself with the nutrients and mainly water and get rid of the sugars and things that was actually aiding the cancer that was in her body. And so when she began to change her diet, she got her spirit, her soul, and her body in line with the Word of God. And God came in and removed those cancers, and she was completely healed 23 years ago. That's a powerful testimony. And you know, I, I, I was a little bit disappointed. I was, I was happy with the people that came out, you know, on Sunday night. But out to... You know, I don't mind telling you, I've always been very honest and very upfront. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't have a larger crowd because all the people in here on Sunday morning said they knew of somebody, they had somebody, a friend that uh, they knew that had cancer. And that just tells me something. When people don't come back out, it tells me that people are so used to the system and the way that doctors want to do things that a lot of people just don't want to put the effort to get what God has for them. And that's disappointing. And I know I'm not preaching to you because you're here on a Wednesday night. But it's disappointing to me. And I shared this with, with Dale and Paula. I said, you know, this probably won't surprise you. And I said, but as a pastor over the years, I have given definitive instructions for people. I had an acquaintance of mine about a year ago. His wife was diagnosed with cancer, and this was on a Tuesday that I was talking to him on the phone. And I said, what are you doing tomorrow night, being a Wednesday night? And he said, well, I don't think we have any plans. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. I need you to hear what I'm telling you. I said, if you will get your wife here tomorrow night and bring her to... World Victory Church, my wife and I will lay hands on your wife and God will heal her in the service. It's pretty specific, isn't it? Because I knew what God had told me to tell him. That was the action of faith that was needed for her to receive her healing. 
Well, guess what? Wednesday came and Wednesday went. No show. I said, Lord, what? He said, you know what? And I left it right there. Three months later, we came across each other. I asked him how his wife was doing, and he said she was doing good, that she had accepted, uh, you know, the diagnosis, and they flew out to California for special treatments and things of that nature, and I just was on the phone, and I was just kind of shaking my head, and I was like, you know, it would have been a whole lot easier just to trust God. And plus, we've already found, if you really dig deep, and if you read the book that Miss Paula wrote, you're going to find that the chemotherapy and the things like that in this world are not beneficial for your body anyway. The only people that have ever come through chemotherapy and radiation are people that have more strength in the Word of God and they live because they believe God than they do believe in that stuff. And I believe what happens is the Word goes in there and flushes out the poison that was put in their body. And I'll tell you this, some of the things that we talked about uh, with, uh, you know, Miss Paula and Dale, uh, were some of the things that we talked about in private is just uh, phenomenal, things that they didn't even share in their book, some of the research uh, that they found. I want you to know God has a better way. Amen? So when stress tries to come into your life, it tries to deplete your immune system. Fatigue, lack of sleep, depression, loss of sex drive, anxiety attacks or other influences of stress. Loneliness and isolation. And here's one I found interesting. Memory problems and constant worrying. When a person begins to forget things on a regular basis, it could be attributed to being, being stressed. You know, and I can say this because our youth are in here tonight. I found this interesting that the youth today are under more peer pressure and more stress influences than ever before. And I've heard from a lot of youth how they feel lonely at times. They feel more pressure and what I've, uh, you know, learned to tell youth, and I would tell you tonight, is don't follow the crowd. I didn't have stress when I was, you know, a teenager because I wasn't following the crowd. I believe what happens is stress comes in when you're trying to fit in a lot of times. I actually uh, flew down. This, this, is, this is terrible, but... Uh, in a way, today I flew, I had to go down to Panama City. I dropped somebody off, and they said, hey, there's going to be a teenager that rides back with you. I said, okay. And I said, well, what happened? They said, well, he, he snuck out uh, and went out and partied and drank and all that kind of stuff, and his mama was so mad, she said, get him on that plane and get him on right now. And what a waste of time. Wasted his whole 4th of July week, you know, because he wanted to go follow the crowd. And I'm just going to say this for whatever it's worth. I know some of you just don't appreciate it, but I don't have to drink to feel good. I just don't do it because I found a better way. And anytime I need a little bit of peace in my life, going and getting a little bit of drink is not the answer. I found just getting close to God. How many of you know praise and worship is a powerful, intoxicating, therapeutic way to get stress off of your life? Hallelujah. Woo! You wonder why we have the worship like we have? Because we want to bring people into the presence of God. People have said, well, your music's too loud. Well, they're not going to do too good when they get to heaven. Because it's going to be rocking and rolling. Well, we don't understand why people fall out in the Spirit. They ain't going to get along in heaven. Because there are going to be people laying on the ground. There's going to, hello. There's going to be people on their knees worshiping. There's going to be people crying. There's going to be people just 
bathing in the glory of God. Amen? And I'm really convinced that there will be classes for people in heaven, be worship one-on-one for people that don't know how to lift their hands. Amen? People that don't know how to speak and, and, and to give glory to God, we're going to have class for you to teach you how to worship the Lord. Well, it just doesn't feel comfortable. Well, that's the whole point. Get out of your comfort zone. Factors that cause stress. Anybody want to throw a few out there? Let's see if you got some on my list. Money. What? Cares of the world. Children. Work. Family. <laughs> a death in the family. Jobs, a sickness, loved one passing away. Did somebody say traffic? Traffic. I like that one. Lord, bless them in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Bitterness can actually come through stress. Be a part of it if you're carrying unforgiveness. It's good. Anybody else? You mentioned most of them that I've got written here. I think you written, actually mentioned all of them. These are all external causes that you mentioned. Bitterness was one that would be an internal, external, major life changes, worker school, relationships, including family and children. You mentioned financial problems and just being too busy. Listen, and if there's anybody that gets it about being busy... You say, well, nobody understands. Andrea and I, we get it. Besides, you know, I was, Dell and Paula was asking me some questions about the, the uh, aviation business. And because, you know, that's what he did for years. He was actually in the airline business and running some airlines and different things like that with the FAA. So he was highly involved. Uh, with a lot of that. And he was asking me, I said, yeah, so what I do is a little bit different than, than other people. And when I began to share with him, he said, so you run all of these companies and you still, you know, pastor a church and you, you, you run the, the, the finances of the ministry? He's like, how do you do all of that? And I said, God's given me a gift. And as long as God, and that's, I think that's the key of how you live stress-free is you're always in God's will. Because he, when I've talked to people about that kind of in the natural, they look at me just kind of shocked. And uh, there, there, there's a lot involved in it, but I'm a very, uh, I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always preparing ahead to stay ahead. So, because if, have you ever noticed when things pile up, that that can create a great stress load? And so, a lot of times when you've got a lot to do and you've got a lot of things on your agenda, those are the things that can create stress in your life and so I've got these companies that I run and then of course the, 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 the church that uh, you know has a lot of uh, uh, responsibility and I love every minute of it if I, if there, now there have been times though that the enemy could try to come in because of stress and take the joy out of that I got out there and flew one of the planes that I haven't flown in a month and a half. And when I got in there, there was dirt on the floor. There was a Coke can. And I was like, bless God. No, it wasn't John Landrum flying that plane a month and a half ago. And I was like, mm, these guys know better than this. You get in the plane, you make sure it's clean for the client. And when you leave, you leave it perfectly clean for the next person in there. Isn't that the way that you'd want somebody to feel and come in behind it? And, you know, so I was like, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to have to have a talk with somebody, it looks like. But I'm not going to get stressed over this. I'm just going to take care of business. Amen? Now, look at some of the factors that are internal that can cause stress. Negative self-talk. How many of you know a lot of believers that talk negatively all the time to themselves? How about this one? Rigid thinking with a lack of flexibility. 
it's my way or the highway. And we have to be careful about this as we get older in life to where we don't get in a tunnel vision. Fear is an internal cause that could bring stress and then uncertainty and lack of control. Let's talk a little bit about the mind and the heart since the Bible said in Philippians chapter 4 that God will give you perfect peace and will keep your mind and heart in Christ Jesus. Turn over to Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 tonight. The Bible says that God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him because you trust in the Lord. God will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on Him because you trust in the Lord. The mind, the definition, I found this interesting, means frame or imagination. So your mind is your makeup, or it's the frame in life, and it all depends upon what you think. Your heart, however, is where your trust is. And notice that's what the Scripture says, that God will keep you in perfect peace, whose framework, whose thinking is stayed on Him, because your heart, because you trust in God. Well, guess what? Out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks. So the question would be is, what are you meditating on? What are you thinking on in life? Because what you're thinking on affects your believing, which is in your heart, and then what you believe comes out of your mouth, and that is what you have. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord. Everybody read it with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Here is the action that is required to defeat stress. Anybody want to know? Once and for all, get it under your feet. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? What did we find out about uh, the mind? It says it's the framework or the imaginations. Casting down imaginations every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every, every, every thought to the obedience of Christ. If that thought doesn't line up with the Word of God, then I'm going to rebuke it and cast it down in Jesus' name. And this is the way I do it. You don't battle thoughts just with thoughts. You trumpet with something greater, so you attack the thoughts with words. Why? Because those thoughts came from words from the enemy. Think about this. There are subliminal messages all encased in the news media, in the reports we receive on TV, the Facebook messages, and especially the commercials. There are messages that are from the devil sent to try to get these thoughts in your heart. And they come from Satan because he plants those seeds. Do you realize there's a reason why we should have the helmet of salvation 
It's to protect us from those evil thoughts. Amen? But what do you do when an evil thought comes in? It's just like in Mark chapter 5 where they came to Jairus and said, Don't trouble the master any longer for your daughter is dead. Jesus turned immediately and said what? Don't be afraid. Why? Because fear will cause stress and anxiety and the actions then will follow that. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't say a word. Stay calm. Andrea said this in talking to Brother Dale. said, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, Sean and I have applied from piloting airplanes. You know what the first thing that they tell you is if you are ever in an emergency situation in an airplane. And let me just go ahead and clarify, I will never be in an emergency situation in an airplane. Amen? The first thing they tell you is to wind the clock or to be calm. Because it generally takes anywhere between a good three to seven seconds at minimum for the pilot to figure out that there even might be a possibility of an emergency. And the last thing that a pilot needs is a panic attack and to react out of stress. So you relax. And I actually had one pilot that worked for me for quite some time that actually became a great teaching lesson for all of my pilots. It's unfortunate that I had to use him on a regular basis as a teaching lesson for the other ones. But he would react at times out of a situation, never cause a problem, but wouldn't think through the process out of calmness and would get stress to cause him to do things that were a little bit out of order. One time he couldn't get the gear down on, or, or the, had a hydraulic leak in an airplane and he started kind of thinking through the process but he thought, you know, I need to let the client know in the back. Not a good idea. Because the client in the back doesn't know there's anything wrong unless somebody tells them. And so he turned around there and said, hey, we got a little problem here, but you see there's always a backup plan on those gears where if you do lose hydraulic pressure, there's what's called a blowdown bottle that'll blow those things down to where you can land but he went ahead and told him all the scenario that if that didn't work what was going to happen even to the degree that he said you know and if it doesn't blow down we're going to fly around a little bit to get all the fuel off that way when we uh, land with the gear up nothing will catch on fire he sure did that's sad isn't it and you're not even a pilot and you know that's a bad idea so you know what I did? I went with him and sat down with him and I said, Now, we're going to use this as an example for teaching purposes. I said, If you ever have a situation in an airplane, a little light comes on and does this or something like this happens, the first question you need to ask yourself, Am I in an emergency? And I said, And then when you get the answer to that, then you'll know what step two is. And I use that as a principle for all of my pilots. If you got a light that comes on up there that's a, a yellow light or a red light, you need to ask, am I in an emergency? And that tells you the next step. And do you know in our planes, we don't have emergencies. Can I have an amen? amen. And so we're never in an emergency. But we have a checklist to go by. So you don't react out of panic or fear you just stay calm and you know the other thing they say while you're staying calm while you're trying to figure out what's going on in the airplane fly the airplane do you know that the number one cause of all plane fatalities and crashes is pilot error caused by distraction
some of you are looking at me, I guess you didn't know that, but that is the truth. Airline, all the way down to the small ones. Pilot error caused by distraction. One guy got in his airplane one time, had been sitting there for a couple of weeks, and it was a small airplane. He took off, and when he went to take off, he opened up the vent to let air flow in from the outside, and there was a wasp nest that had put itself up in there, and so these wasps just covered up in the inside of the, uh, the airplane. And here he is trying to swat these bees. He ain't got nowhere to go. He crashed the airplane and survived. And I know that that would be a challenging situation. Take a few stings, turn back around and land, and stay focused on staying alive. Let's finish this tonight. Y'all receiving something good from the Lord? All right. The choice is yours. And this is something the Lord told me to add. Sometimes... A whole lifestyle change is necessary to get rid of the stress. You might have to be in a position where you realize that the job that you're at is not God's best for you. And to make a change takes a bold step to get the peace that you desire. Changing friends, like we've talked about, might be required to be in a place to where you're not stressed out. I've had some of those type people in my life over the years and had to make some strong decisions about making those changes. How many, how many, how many here have ever had to have a, a hard talk with a uh, friend and tell them you couldn't continue on that path because they're just stressing you out. Now, anybody ever had that kind of conversation? Good. I'm glad to see that. Well done. Family. Family sometimes can be above those friends. And you just tell them, look, I love you, but I'm not going to do this. You call me on the phone and you talk about all, everything that's wrong and then want me to pray with you no I'm not going to do that I'm going to pray for you but I don't need to hear everything negative anymore amen and you say well that's just not polite no you're saving yourself trouble so sometimes you've got to uh, make a lifestyle change to protect your environment and you probably need to go home today and check out your friends and make sure that they all fit in with God's plan in your life because I found this to be true the enemy will also send people to try to steal your joy and he'll send an imitation and the devil's good at it he'll send people along that you think man this person's just going to be great and they end up being the very people that try to steal your joy alright Matthew 6 33 and 34 we'll end with this one seek ye first the kingdom of God his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So here's what I found about this scripture. Now we all, anybody, anybody got plans for the future? Nothing wrong with that. Jesus is talking about a principle here. And this is what I found to be true. The real challenge for all of us is allowing God to take care of tomorrow for us. You can plan ahead. You all plan, you all should be planning financially ahead, but you're not thinking about tomorrow to where it's causing a worry in your life. God has my tomorrow. I need to focus on right here amen I need to focus on right now because right now is the right time 
in Jesus' name. And it's faith that is now that produces my miracles, not only now, but also for tomorrow. So my challenge is to let God take care of tomorrow if I'm supposed to be thinking about right now. I'm not going to be stressed about my kids about tomorrow. I, as a parent, love my kids. I love my grandson. And I think about what I want to see for them in their future, but I don't worry about their future. Amen? I focus on today, and I pray about what they're doing today. Seek first, and then I'll end with this statement, something that I learned a long time ago, is that when you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life, and remember when I said earlier that I don't drink and the Bible says uh, you know that don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit singing and making melodies in your heart if you will realize that the Holy Spirit can be the therapeutic peace in your life then you won't need everything that the world is trying to give you would you stand with me tonight? I think sometimes we've gotten so busy that we forget to just ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. We forget to talk with the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's here on the earth every morning and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding me. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for teaching me. Didn't the Bible say that He will teach you all things? Amen. And He'll guide you into all truth? He's the comforter. He's the one that we need. And when you say, Holy Spirit, I need you, then He'll come and fill you, and He'll give you the words that you need and everything that you need in life to not only just make it, but to overcome. Are there anybody here that wants to be an overcomer? Amen. That means that you have victory in every area of your life. Listen, church, I've got to say this. This country is literally heading to a place and already is to where medication is a part of the lifestyle. Everybody seems to be over-medicated. A kids nowadays, instead of getting a spanking, are given a pill. And parents are quick to agree with it. And say, hey, well, he's, uh, you know, hyper. He's aggressive. You know, I, I know both of my boys, especially one of them, probably would have been, back in those days, it was Ritalin. Am I right, Andrea? And if they had, if we had put that, if we had put that kid on Ritalin, he would have never fulfilled his calling in his life. Because you know what Ritalin does? It suppresses the anointing. Oh, and by the way, what'd you say? <laughs> Bell whip. Amen. Oh, we can't talk about that in church now, Brother Cedric. We got to be politically correct. Yeah, you know what politically correct is? Spare the rod, spoil the child. How many of you believe in what the Bible says? Now, there's a right way in doing it, there's a wrong way. And yeah, if you don't know how to spank your kid, we'll come and we'll show you. We actually had a paddle here for years to teach parents on how to spank their kids. We had, we had, we had some parents one time that came to us, and they had that same problem and said, we, we really do want to hear from God on our kids, and, and we've got them on this medication. We've got them on Ritalin and things like that. And I said, well, you know, the first thing is, let's talk to you about how to discipline your child. And you know, you know what happened? They left the church. Because they didn't want to hear that. Let me tell you what happens. When you start putting kids on those 
man-made medicines, then all that is 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 putting a promise to them that when they get older, that's what they're going to need through life. They'll have to have anxiety medicines. They'll have to have all these other kind of medicines to deal with all of the effects that that other thing caused over the years. Doctors won't tell you that, but there's always side effects. Okay, I've gone to meddling now, but we all need to hear it. I'm just trying to tell you that this country will soon be in a place, if it isn't already, that everybody's going to be over-medicated and they won't even know God is their healer. That's why I'm teaching the true gospel. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And freedom comes through the real Jesus. Now, you're here tonight and you say, well, I'm... I'm on medicine presently. What should I do? Start reading the Word, which is health to all your flesh. And you know what happens when you take the gospel? Then you won't have to take the other pills. This right here will push out all the other stuff. If you're here tonight and you've, had, you've been on anxiety medicine, that's under the curse. Anxiety is from the enemy. You shouldn't have to take medicine for that. I'm just curious, anybody here ever had a panic attack? Let me see your hand. How many of you know that's from the devil? And see, a panic attack is related to fear because of the circumstances that come in to try to bring you down. You don't need medicine to help you with that. You need a lifestyle change. Let's pray tonight as our ministry team comes up. We're going to put stress under our feet in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of fear. For your word says, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And in the name of Jesus, we release the power of love and the Holy Spirit tonight in all of our lives so that we can receive freedom freedom and release in Jesus name and if you would with me just lift your hands to the Lord and let the Spirit of God touch you right where you are we receive it in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name it is done it is done I bless you in the name of Jesus and decree that the next few days will be peaceful as you rest and rejoice in the Lord so God bless you go out and be blessed and always remember the spirit of the Lord is upon you